Are we on? Sensors confirm live transmission. Oh man, we're on the air? How cue me! From the Galaxy Ballroom, high atop the stratosphere. Oh man, the tape! Just roll the tape! Good space dog. Beaming to you from absolutely anywhere. It's Kids World Sports. No boundaries, no limits, no rules. As the KWS Spy in the Sky grabs the action, the drama, and the heroics of kids sports as they're happening all over this wonderful blue planet. Tell them who we are, my robo-rapping MC. On the mic, your host, Switch. I'm his artificially intelligent co-host, Hal. Almost as loyal as our cyber mascot, Hal Lord. It's all good on Kids World Sports. You know, so many sports we feature on KWS are all about competing against somebody else. Full contact monopoly is the most grueling of the dice-related sports. No, I'm serious. What about a sport where your biggest foe is your own fear? Like mountaineering. Sounds like you're leading into our lofty look at Jake Swain, the 13-year-old climber from Alberta, Canada, who finds himself at the peak of his young career. Ha, ha, ha. Peak. Get it? Ha, ha. Yeah, we get it, pal. These are the rugged peaks of the Canadian Rockies, a mountain range that stretches for 4,800 kilometers and reaches heights of over 4,000 meters. But despite their remoteness, the Rockies are a playground for a few daring adventurers. Hi, I'm Jake Swain, I'm 13, and I'm a climber. Today I'm going climbing with my dad, Mike, and my uncle, Tony. Uh, this is important because I've never really done any other mountaineering trips before. This is Mount Athabasca, and this is the climb we're going to be doing today. On the first day, Jake and his team plan to climb to their first camp, soaring 2,400 meters above sea level. On day two, they'll traverse the Athabasca Glacier to the base of the famed Silverhorn Route. And from there, they'll begin the 550 meter climb on steep snow and ice to the summit. This is my first 11,000 feet, and I hope the weather's good. Weather is the number one enemy to climbers, especially in the Canadian Rockies, where sunny skies can turn to whiteout conditions in just a few hours. This climb's important uh, for me, to, for Jake to make this step up into mountaineering, because it's a big climb and it opens a huge realm of possibilities in mountaineering for us to continue to climb together for many years to come. He's become big and strong in the last year or so, so he's truly going to be a member of the rope team. He's not just a kid coming along for the climb. I've done lots of different kinds of climbing, like ice climbing, rock climbing, just hiking up big mountains. Jake has been climbing in his father's footsteps for eight years. His resume includes difficult rock and ice routes, but his attempt on Mount Athabasca is in a whole new league. This climb is probably going to be a lot more of just pounding uphill in the cold snow and ice. But I think there's probably going to be some steeper climbing in it. And steep is right. The Canadian Rockies have a reputation for sheer faces, bad rock, and unpredictable weather. Conditions so extreme, climbers come from around the world to prove themselves here. Usually, my biggest fear is just falling. When I was younger, I had a fear of heights. I don't really have that anymore. But, um, you know, still, what if the rope snapped and all that? I know it can't happen, but in the back of my brain, I just think, what if it did? To protect against accidents, climbers use special gear and practice different techniques designed to prevent falls. We're gonna use this slope to practice self-arrest for hand. 
point of self-arrest is to prevent climbers from falling long distances. A climber must practice this over and over again until it becomes second nature. Though, Jake, that's the way. Whew. I think I'm ready. Hi, that was great. There it is. So tonight we'll hike up high and camp as high in the marine as we can, Jake. Wow. See there? Let's get our gear sorted. We got a lot of gear to get together before we head out. We've been working up to this point for a few years with Jake. Of all my kids, he's the one who seems to really love it. And even foregoes his friends to come out with us and climb. So uh, he may regret it after he spends a night in a tent with the old guys. <laughs> the Alpine environment is rife with dangers. Avalanches, seracs, crevasses, and the unpredictability of the weather pose a constant threat to climbers. If you have all the proper equipment to make it a lot less dangerous. This is a crampon and it gives you traction in the ice that you just don't like slip and fall. This is a helmet. It's used to protect me from anything that falls down. <laughs> Things like ice and rock and other people. Oops. Here's a harness. I use it to connect me to other people to help me from falling. And then this is an ice axe. There's a pick. This is the part that you drive into the ice so you can lift yourself up and do all that. My back is about to snap. I have everything in here. The Swains have to make good time. It's only two hours until sunset, and they have over one and a half kilometers to hike until they reach their camp. That is a glacier, and it's made of ice, as you can see. And right over there are a bunch of crevasses. Those are just big cracks made in the ice. Rock pile, sweet rock pile. Ah, feels good. Oh, yeah. Reach. Uh, the weather is cold and snowy, but I think it might clear up by tomorrow, hopefully. We just have to somehow get it to stay on the ground so that it doesn't just all blow away like that. We don't have any running water, so the only way to get enough water without having to carry it is to melt snow. Pork jerky. Oh, there's a big piece of pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's off to bed for the Swains. They'll need an early start tomorrow if they hope to beat the weather and climb the 1,000 meters to the summit of Jake's first big peak, Mount Athabasca. When we come back on Kids World Sports. An early start is key to successful mountaineering. Climbers must hit the slopes before the temperature warms up and the snow becomes too soft for climbing. Oh. It looks like it's gonna be good. Look at the day's breaking perfect for us. Jake, how about uh, go and fill this up with snow? You'll find some snow over there somewhere. Just make sure it isn't yellow. There's just enough time for a quick breakfast before Team Swain packs up and tackles the 1,000 meters to Athabasca Summit. A little cold, but once we move, we'll be great. Yeah, I think that we're probably going to make the summit today. It's a pretty nice day. Have a beautiful day in paradise. The Swains have to move quickly. You all set, Bill? Yep. It may be clear now, but the weather in the Rockies can change rapidly. And before they can sink their axes into the steep ice and snow of the Silverhorn route, they must tackle the vast expanse of the Athabasca Glacier. Glacier travel is tricky business. What looks like a simple stroll across ice and snow could end up as a deadly plunge into huge hidden cracks in the ice known as crevasses. Climbers use special traveling techniques and gear to keep them from falling into one of these enormous holes, some of which are hundreds of meters deep. With the glacier behind them, the Swains have reached the base of the Silverhorn route. Now all that separates Jake from the summit of his first big peak is 500 meters of 45 degree ice and snow. Once on this difficult slope, 
The team will have no option for retreat if the weather turns bad. Jake. Everything that I've ever done is always a little bit scary when it comes to climbing. It takes lots of courage to come up to places like this. Tired, but good. With still over 300 meters to the summit, the temperature begins to fall and the wind picks up, an indication that a storm could be on its way. The Silverhorn Arete is too steep for retreat and the Swains will have to continue to the top if they hope to hook up with the route back down. Tired, cold. Good job there, pal. Oh, oh, son of mine. Jake's a swain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's unbelievable. I can't, I can't talk about it. <laughs> Give me that water. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, I wasn't even sure we'd get this far. The weather's been iffy. You can see it's rolling in from the west, so we gotta make tracks in a big hurry and get down off off the glacier before we get in a whiteout. With his first big peak behind him, Jake has graduated to full-fledged mountaineer, earning himself a spot on the Swain family's next alpine adventure. That was awesome. That was awesome. All right, buddy. We love you. I can't believe this kid, Cedric Boisseau. Ooh, inspired by our next story? No, jealous. I mean, our next KWS hero has been racing actual go-karts for so long. His early pit stops included a diaper chain. Well, I'll go as far as to say that Cedric started driving while he was still in a booster seat. And now, direct from Le Mans, France, KWS takes you to the 24 hours of Le Mans go-kart style. Someone check his license, please. Every year, the best racers in the world gather in France for the oldest car race in the world, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's a true test of technology and drivers, but there's another 24-hour race of a completely different flavor in town, Le Carte 24 Hours. Hi, I'm Cedric. I'm 16 years old. Welcome to Le Mans. I started karting when I was four years old and started competing when I was 11. I love karting because of the turns and the speed. Cedric has been racing karts since he was four years old. This event will be the first time he competes in a 24-hour endurance race. For the 24 hours in all endurance races, I race with my team, PCC Concept. This is my cart. The gas, the brakes, the steering wheel, the engine, and four tires. Cedric will be sharing the driving with Alban, the senior driver, Jean-Philippe and Emilien. Together they will be taking on 45 of the best teams in the world. Each driver will race six one-hour shifts. To place well in this race, a team will have to complete over 1,100 laps in the 24-hour period. Today is practice and qualifying day. The teams will run and test their carts to the breaking point. One advantage to karting is that a tow truck is easy to get. The downside is that he could lose his pants. The 15 mechanics on the team are responsible for making the car run at its absolute fastest, but it's the drivers who must tell them how the car is performing. When I try to carve the corner, the front corner seems to sink in and drain power. Looks like it might rain, so the team fits the cart with special rain tires. There are two qualifying heats. 
first is going to start right now. Alabama will run in the second, and we trust him for a pole position. Because he's young and is afraid of the water, can't swim, I have to do it. When Alban hits the track, there hasn't been any rain. Alban's rain tires rob him of speed and traction. Try as he might, he can't get the cart to handle properly, and he qualifies 22nd near the bottom of the running order. No problem. We'll be... We'll be in 10th place by the 10th lap. If you qualify last, but you don't have any breakdowns, and you do your relays perfectly, you have no problems at night, and the others do have breakdowns, then you can win this race by 5, 10, even 20 laps. Now it's time to give the cart a break. Let's go eat. This race is very prestigious, first because it lasts 24 hours, but also because of the level of international participation. Even during the French championship, you don't find this atmosphere. You have to cooperate and share so much with your team. After a quick meal, the team continues testing and tuning well into the night. The night portion of the event is particularly challenging for the racers. I've just finished my night session. It went very well. I registered the fourth best time and we still have three more drivers to go. We are very confident for tomorrow's race. The team is starting 22nd, but with the fourth fastest car, things look good for tomorrow's race. When we come back on Kids World Sports. It's race day at the CART 24 Hours of Le Mans. Teams are making their final preparations. Cedric and Team PCC Concept have one last opportunity to blow off some steam before the race begins. On the track, contact between drivers is frowned upon. But here, it's the name of the game. Cedric and his team will be starting at 22nd in a field of 45, but their confidence is high. By the end of the first lap, we'll be in 15th position. And they're off. Team watches as Alban climbs the ranks. I said that he'd be 15th by the end of the first lap, and he was 13th. And now at the end of his shift, he's up to 5th. After an hour of running, Alban ends his shift, and it's Jean-Philippe's turn. Next up is Cedric. This is his first time at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, and he's feeling the pressure. This is a small shell from Corsica. It's an eye of St. Lucia, and it's a good luck charm for Cedric. He's going to put it in the lining of his helmet. Cedric is going to need all the luck he can get. When Jean-Philippe comes in for the shift change, he tells Cedric that the steering on the cart is extremely loose. The right steering mechanism is cracked, but there's no time to fix it now. Cedric will have to do his best. He's off. Even with a damaged cart, he puts in some amazing times, but the cart is getting worse and handling poorly. Cedric leaves the track, barely able to maintain control. Still, Cedric races on. Yeah, bon, he's he's good. Good. We're in first place. Cedric has bought the team some time. The mechanics practice the needed repairs on an exact duplicate of the cart. When I got in the cart, there was a small crack in the steering linkage. And as the race went on, it got bigger and bigger and finally broke. Lucky for me, it broke just at the entrance of the pit, so I just came in. Then Emilien took his next shift early so he wouldn't have to stop again. They slip from first place to 15th. It's going to be a long night for the team. They run full out all night, and although the team blew an engine, they still managed to climb up the ranks.
By the time Cedric finishes his 5 a.m. shift, the team is back in eighth place and climbing fast. Who's on the cart? Cedric? He's burning up the track. 51-10. That's the thing about endurance races. It's not about the big problems. It's mostly about outlasting your competition. And as the sun rises over the track, the team is still running full out and clawing their way to the top of the ranks. This year, we had a very young team, and Cedric performed up to our expectations. He's been aggressive and precise. He's brought a lot to the team, and I think next year, we'll have the same team. Even with used tires, I put in some good times, and now we're in the same lap as the team in third place. But the day is long, and the team has some radiator problems. At least they aren't the only ones having a tough go at it. The team that was in third just had a major problem, and now we're in third with a laps lead over them. More than half the teams that start the race do not finish. Alban takes the final ship. He has to maintain the position and try not to break anything. They did it. The team takes third place. My next challenge is the French Championships, which will be run on this same track. It's huge. This is the biggest cup I've ever had. I can just replace this processor. Alloy, clamp. Hey, Doc. I hope it doesn't megahertz. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oops. We're on. Quick! I'm exposed. Sorry. Well, some files aren't meant to be shared. Well, I've done all I can. What do you mean, Doc? How long do I have? About 10 seconds. 10 seconds? Till the show's over, silly. All you need is a new motherboard. A new motherboard? But I love my mommy board. Don't start with me, okay, pal? She's all I have. Look, we'll get one that has the exact same memory. Are you sure? Just say goodnight, pal. Goodnight, pal. I want my mommy 